everyone and welcome, welcome to today's webinar, Lange Monferrato Roero, UNESCO Landscapes and Art. This is, of course, organized and promoted by the Italian National Tourism Board of US and Canada. As usually, I would like to thank all the attendees today. We have uh, our friend from US and Canada, but also we are very happy to see once again our friend from down south, Mexico and Puerto Rico. Thank you very much. And, and we are very appreciative of you taking your time off and spending time with us to learn more about beautiful Italy. And today, one more chapter in the saga of Piedmont. So this is the third webinar. Yes, it is the third webinar of uh, a multi-part series on the beautiful region of Piedmont. And today we are, as you can easily see from the from the uh, uh, from from your screen right now, the Lange Monferrato Roero. I'm very happy to introduce today uh, the speakers that we have representing the Lange Monferrato Roero and the testimonials talking about how beautiful this part of uh, uh, Piedmont is. But before I do that, I have uh, a welcome video of the region of Piedmont that sort of introduces us to the, this uh, wonderful, wonderful presentation. So please, let's show the video. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Lisa Piazza, the Managing Director of Visit Piemonte, the Regional Tourism Board of Piemonte. And we are in charge of, uh, of promoting uh, this beautiful region located in northwestern Italy. Uh, as you probably know, Italy has already opened and we are working hard in order to be ready and to welcome you back in our territory. Uh, the reason why you should come and visit us is that Piemonte is an off the beaten path uh, destination, not so well known and on the other hand, so we, we can offer so many different activities and attractions that we will uh, enjoy them. First of all, Torino, its capital city, a very uh, elegant and unsigned uh, capital of Italy. Then we have uh, excellent food and wine wherever you go in our region. Third, plenty of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Uh, among them, I would like to remind uh, the royal residences of the uh, Savoy family and the uh, vineyard landscape of Langerer Monferrato, both UNESCO uh, World Heritage Sites. Then we have lake, uh, beautiful lakes, uh, Lake Maggiore and Lake Orta, and uh, plenty of hills, river, lakes, not only mountains, which are our most beautiful heritage probably. You can experience plenty of outdoor activities and uh, what else? Uh, the best is to show you a short video so that you can feel involved and I really would like to receive you here. Thank you and the floor to my colleagues after my intervention. Thank you.
Anyway, so this is the beautiful region of Piedmont. Now let's go to one of the great sort of great, great sort of assets that this, this beautiful region has and this beautiful destination. So I'll stop talking. I'll pass it on the microphone now to Michaela. Michaela Banditi, she's right down there. She's going to be sort of coordinating a few testimonies that we have down there. So Michaela, walk us through it. Why do we have to come to Lange the Monferrato Roero? Why is it so beautiful? Tell us. Well, it's it's an amazing part of the world. It really is an amazing part of the world. Uh, I'm kind of like an ambassador and I come here every time I can. Right now we're sitting in this crazy beautiful setting in uh, Cozzolo in a tiny little chiesette in a little church in the middle of the Moscato vineyards. Now, I'm sure America, you guys are just sipping on your morning coffee. Should we say that we already had a sip of Moscato? <laughs> Can we tell them? It's aperitif time here but the landscape is unbelievably breathtakingly beautiful. I'm sure we have a camera that's going to follow our uh, managing director of the tourist board, Mauro Carbone, and we can show you the unbelievable setting that we have literally 360 degrees all around us. Wow. Ciao, and uh, ciao from uh, Coatzolo. We are just in the middle of the UNESCO uh, site of Lange Roero Monferrato Vineyards. Uh, it's a very particular uh, UNESCO site because uh, it's uh, 80 kilometers of uh, fantastic hills and many, many different wines. So now we have a very short trip uh, along the, the, the site, the six core zones of the site. So we can discover the wines uh, that we produce in the famous wines, I think, in this area. Okay, the, the, the first one is here. We are in uh, Barolo for the, uh, the Corzon number one. Uh, Barolo is not only a wine, uh, Barolo is uh, also a village, a very little village, 600 uh, people in, in Barolo, uh, all around the, the castle. It's very important, this castle, because in uh, the cellars of the castles, uh, 170 years ago, uh, Marchesa Falletti uh, had a, a very important idea because uh, uh, she understood that, that uh, by Barolo gra the Nebbiolo grapes, uh, you can have a fantastic wine. Uh, and uh, after 170 years, now we have, we have Barolo wine that is the most important, most famous, most precious uh, wine in Italy but uh, also for many people in the world. Uh, and it is produced uh, in a few little villages, in, in 11 little villages. Uh, you can see Barolo, uh, La Morra, uh, Serralunga, that is an, another fantastic medieval uh, castle. Uh, just a few kilometers, 10 kilometers, and you are in Grinzane, Grinzane Cavour. Uh, in Grinzane Cavour, now you have many very important events. Uh, the uh, World Truffle Auction, the most important truffle auction all over the world, is every year in November in this castle. A <clears throat> uh, few kilometers and you are in Alba, Tartufo Bianco d'Alba, Alba White Truffle is the name of the famous uh, truffle. And then uh, with the, by uh, Barolo, by Nebbiolo uh, grapes, you can produce uh, Barolo and also Barbaresco. Barbaresco is the other famous village. Uh, it's uh, smaller than Barolo, oh, only a few hundred people uh, just around the tower. Uh, it's uh, the best uh, place that, where uh, you can uh, see the landscape of all the region. Uh, just over uh, the Tanero River, there is Roero, but uh, we call uh, about Roero uh, later. Uh, okay. And then not only red wines, but also white wines. The Italian sparkling wines, the Asti Spumante, was uh, created was in, just in Canelli. Uh, this is uh, the uh, medieval part of Canelli. Uh, and now you can also visit uh, for uh, diamonds in the, in the cellar worlds. Because go. they are under the, the soil, underground. And uh, now you can visit them and it's fantastic. Then you are uh, in, uh, in Nizza uh, Monferrato with the Barbera. Uh, 
today we will have a, a big surprise about uh, Barbera uh, because we have uh, one of the best winemakers of uh, Barbera all over the world with us. And uh, number six, with the uh, Monferrato degli Infernot. <laughs> Infernot are uh, little caves uh, underground where many years ago uh, our people could uh, conserve uh, the wines and to have a, a fresh uh, and a humidity for uh, for the wines. So it was a, a very, very uh, fast and uh, short trip, but we wait for you uh, to work uh, together uh, really very, very uh, okay. soon uh, around uh, this, uh, this trip. Thank you, Mauro. Thank you. I want to add one one personal touch. Sorry, Michele, before you, I, I give it back to you. Something I want to disclose to our to our attendees. You might have seen Mauro in other performance or in other presentation, I should say, in the United States. But one thing that's great about how passionate Mauro is about his, uh, you know, his destinations. And I remember very vividly, Mauro, when you shared with me not even a month ago that you were in the office and you actually hand out your first uh, guide uh, after sort of the, the, the close up and how emotional that made you. That really, I think, stands to really represent how passionate you are. And I think it shows in the, in the, in, in the presentation and the, every time we actually cross paths. So I wanted to say that you, you are just not just director of the marketing, but also a great testimonial of the, of the area. So please, Michaela, take it away. Yeah, Francesco, it's, it's really difficult not to become emotional and to become yeah. passionate about this area. It's just so spectacularly beautiful with the people and the whole network and the entire terroir from the, from the, wine, uh, from the wine industry up. We're speaking about an, a relatively small area, uh, just to imagine it on a map, would be somewhere between Portofino, Milan and Monte Carlo. OK, so this is the triangle in which we are um, in which we are currently around 400,000 people and apart from the three largest cities most of the people are living in these tiny little villages and hilltop hamlets and medieval towns of extraordinary beauty but we have somebody way more prepared than myself Sandro Minella incredible tour guide 20 years experience Sandra is uh, uh, like many people he's not from here he moved here because he was just like love struck by the by the unbelievable beauty sandro please give us some more information about the territory i, I fell in love with a territory that is like uh uh it's like a book when you when you are here we saw these beautiful videos uh, when you see these landscapes or these works of art like this church uh it's like the beautiful cover of a book and for sure cover is important you choose sometimes you choose a book because of a beautiful sure. cover right but uh what really made me fall in love with this place is not a cover is what's written inside the book and like in the book here you have landscapes you have uh, the big history the part big part of the history of Italy what was uh, happened actually a few uh, miles from here uh, the prime minister started his career as a pri the first prime minister of Italy started his career as a mayor of Grinzane one of the UNESCO uh, heritage site in the Barolo district and he was a winemaker himself so even then, they, uh, he understood the potential of the of the of the of this territory in terms of wine, but also the potential of wine in terms of a, an ambassador of this place. Because again, in a glass of wine, like in a book, you find all these elements. You find uh, landscape. When you go home after drinking a Barolo in Barolo, you will never drink a, a, a wine with, without closing your eyes and feeling again in Barolo, feeling the breeze, feeling. Uh, you know the beautiful seeing the beautiful landscape being uh, like embraced like a uh, hug by all these vineyards but also more important the thing that will uh, all my guests all the clients that I guest and friends uh, that come to have that have tours with me when they go home uh, they always tell me you know every time I see a Barolo or a Barbaresco or a Barbera or Nizza I'm immediately in that day when I met Stefano Chiarlo or uh, um, you know a producer or his grandmother came uh, bringing salami and then we played with the dog so it's this incredibly um, warm atmosphere uh, and I think it all comes from the fact that here you feel and probably what really made me change my life and become a you know a, a local myself here is that um, 
you feel like you're a part of a story here that's larger than life. Uh, you feel that everybody here, just to give an idea, uh, everybody here is involved. In, Francesco, you were mentioning the saga of Piemonte. We can say the saga of our wines, you know, it's like a collective work of art where everybody, not only the wine producers, because here, even the postman of the village, even the pharmacist or whoever that's not involved directly in the wine business, his concern is involved in this. And I, what I notice that all my guests, when they go back home, they feel like they have become a part of this story. Yeah. They have become a part of this book. When they go home, uh, they always, uh, when they hear something about Barolo or, um, or Nizza or uh, this uh, area, they are immediately involved. This is part of my life now. This is not just a beautiful place where I had a vacation. It has become a part of my life. Even if you come, I assure you, 100%, mm -hmm. because I 20 year experience, I, I can see that, I can tell that, uh, you will become part of this, uh, of the book of the Lange, of the, a book that is still being written uh, every day. We, it's not, we are not just about preserving a tradition like a museum. We are about uh, continuing the tradition and writing this book every day. And uh, it's really what we, everybody will fall in love about this. Just one thing, you have to take the time to not do just a bucket list of uh, places to see, but let yourself be absorbed by this atmosphere and not just, uh, you know, just, just take a look at, at the cover of the book, but just open this book and let yourself be absorbed by the story. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we're going to be moving on to talk about art and art in the open air. Um, we have a video now called Mestiere d'Artista regarding the uh, making of this beautiful installation, this beautiful decoration that David Tremlett did uh, a couple of years ago here in Coatzolo. It's one of four chapels that has been decorated internally, externally, four completely different chapels, uh, but four very, very important works of art. And uh, I think something very interesting is that these four works of art have been commissioned by private parties. And it's so incredible how the locals, um, that they appreciate and they want to share the artwork with other people in this extraordinary context. So let's start right here with the video. Could you send the video, Francesco? Absolutely, we'll do. Um, so we have Silvano Stella here with us today. Silvano commissioned this work of art um, uh, a few years ago. Silvano has been living here for around 20 years, 30 years, well, and just happened to buy the castle in Coazzolo. Uh, would you tell us your story, Silvano, and how you uh, came to, to, to work in Turin? Well, uh, I was born uh, in Torino, but I spent most of my vacation, summer holidays here with the grand relatives and so i grew up in this area and i this is under my skin so as soon as i managed to 
to move my studio uh, somewhere else outside of Torino. I decided to go back to my roots, and uh, here I am. And uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, welcome in in Quatzol. Quatzol is a tiny little village just in between uh, uh, Lange and Monferrato. We are just uh, in the center, so in the, in the heart of a uh, of a UNESCO area. And um, now we are sitting in this uh, little patio to continue a tradition that uh, uh, started long ago with the with Tramlet, but I, I, I'll let you know about this uh, slightly later. Let me first say, uh, well, being uh, Italian, we, 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 are, we have a, a big honor for all, what, uh, all the heart and beauty that the sun surrounds us. And uh, we feel also the res responsibility to, to uh, carry on this uh, legacy. Uh, when when uh, this area was uh, selected to be part of the, of the list of the UNESCO, they said, uh, uh, as a cultural landscape, since uh, it is a result of the combined work of nature and man, thanks to the outstanding value of its wine culture, which has shaped the landscapes over the centuries. And uh, in fact, this is what, what, uh, what happened. And lately, more and more artists uh, are traveling the, our, our region to, to experience the, the excellence of wine and food and landscapes. And some of them decided to, to leave a footprint. And uh, this is uh, exactly what happened with, uh, with David Tremlett. I remember when I when I first uh, met him, uh, we were in Venice. So imagine the difference. Uh, he was working there, surrounded by by history, by uh, architecture, and um, and so I was asking him to come in, in Lange, in, on top of a hill, in the middle of the vineyards, and natural silence. But uh, thanks to his origin, maybe because uh, his um, uh, parents were farmers, and or maybe due to the fact that 20 years ago he, together with American artist Saul Lewitt, they both together they painted the the, the tiny little Cappella del Barolo, and uh, so out of some reasons he decided to come and accept the the job, and uh, he, he then said. Uh, um, I was inspired by the geometrical shapes and by the neat rows of vineyards, as if the hills were covered with corduroy fabric. And it's a very <laughs> Love that, yeah. poetic uh, way of describing the place. Uh, and to, to link with what uh, Sandro said, uh, it took one month to, to put together this masterpiece. And every single day we had lunch here and this is why we are continuing the tradition, the tradition of uh, having some snack here in France as we are doing tonight. After that, the, this uh, cappella became the, the place where we have all, all um, performances uh, in, in, with all the arts languages, from uh, poetry to music. And uh, now, lately, we are very keen in, in supporting the physical theater to to overcome the the language barrier and to be uh, understandable also for uh, foreign visitors and uh, so we are really happy if you want to come and share with us all this beauty uh, art and landscape food wine everything thank we'll you we'll wait for you thank you thank you Thanks. uh let's move on uh, we're still talking about art and contemporary art it's a great honor for us today to have Patrizia Sandretto Rere Baudengo. Patrizia is uh, certainly one of Italy's great patrons to the contemporary arts. Um, she holds a seat on the International Council of uh, London's Tate Museum, of the New Museum, Bart College, uh, New York's Museum of Modern Art. Should I continue? Should I? The list is really, really long. Patrizia has made an enormous contribution to contemporary art with the foundation, with the uh, Sandretto Rebaudengo Foundation, which started in Turin. And here, in the midst of the vineyards, is uh, doing honestly amazing work in a tiny little hamlet nearby. Patrizia, would you tell us your story? Look into that camera there. 
um, I, everything started in the 90s when uh, I decided to uh, to collect contemporary art and to establish a fondazione um, here in Torino. It was 1995. The fondazione opened uh, um, before here because the first venue of the fondazione is not Torino but is Guarene. And Guarene it's a very small village just on the other part of the Tanner River. So we are not in the land, we are in the Roero, a nice, nice area. And for us that we are in Guarene, we just, when we open our window, there is all the Lange, Barbaresco, Coazzolo, mm -hmm. so a beautiful, really beautiful area. And uh, so in uh, Guarene, um, we have a palazzo, a family palazzo from the 18th century. And uh, in the 90, we decided to change the life of the palazzo. The palazzo was a Palazzo for our family. Now the palazzo is a center for art. Now when we're in the palazzo, we organize an exhibition, uh, we do rent, we do a lot of events. And first of all, what we like and we really want to do is to give the opportunity to many young artists to come and to produce, realize new works that then we, we, we show in, uh, in Guarene. And Guarene, you have to say that it's a very nice place. We have a fantastic Palazzo Castello Castle yes. that is uh, now, now a five star relationship hotel. Uh, we have also good restaurant. Uh, we have seven churches that we want to use also to, to show art. And obviously we have Palazzo uh, Re Rebaudengo that is so important for, for me, for my life. And, uh, and you, you also have another uh, venue in Torino that we opened later because Palazzo Rebodengo was uh, opened in 1997. Instead, Torino was opened in 2002. We create collaboration between the two venues. And then uh, last year, we decided to start with a new project because we really believe that the landscape is so beautiful that really we have to find a way to put art, culture, and nature together to create a dialogue between them. And so for that, we are working, and we started, let's say, last year, uh, we want to create big, large, site-specific installation, uh, giving the opportunity to many young artists to be known. But what is very important is that it's a way to invite people from all over the world to come and to see how art can create a fantastic, delicate, but also strong dialogue with landscape, with nature. And I have to say that we just uh, uh, renovated our Nebbiolo vineyards, and now in the sculptures start to live and to grow up uh, in, the, in the hill that is called San Licerio Hill, that is quite very close to our um, palazzo. Thank you, thank you so much, Fabrizia. I think one of the most amazing things about art is that it's so accessible. Yeah. When we speak about these, uh, about these works of art and about the works that your foundation are um, installing around the, the, the vineyards or the chapels, it's, it's, there, you don't have uh, any walls, you can actually move close to the artwork, you can become part of the artwork like we are right now in the patio and actually experience it. I think that is so special that there's no like dividing line between the, the people visiting and, and the artwork. But we'll, we'll come back to you guys. I would like to move on to Stefano Chiarlo. Stefano. Okay. Uh, fourth generation winemaker. Um, and Stefano's Barbera Nizza was recently acclaimed 2018, acclaimed the best wine in the world by wine enthusiasts. Um, Stefano is working really hard on the wine route uh, around the Asti area in the Monferrato, uh, which is one of these three areas, one of these three macro areas we're talking about. Uh, Stefano, would you tell us a little bit about the wine route and about this network of local operators that you're putting together? Yeah, Wine Road is uh, an organization very important because the connection between the wine producer, the hospitality, the, the chef, and all the, the, all the people that work for the hospitality is very important because when the people arrive here, they need to know everything. And this place is so rich of uh, food, wine, uh, uh, opportunity to go in the forest, to go in the vineyard, that uh, uh, our job, second job, because my first job obviously is to produce uh, important wine, is to a little bit change the mentality because uh, in Piedmont uh, in the past it was very traditional family, very traditional people, but uh, especially now, you know better than me that uh, 
the connection and the mm, uh, and, and the style to promote uh, all the uh, all the piece of this puzzle is very very important. But also it's very very important have an open mentality, especially with the people that are so warm in this place. If you uh, arrive the, the mission to open the mentality is so unique the approach of the people when arrive here and the right uh, tomorrow is uh, when we come back at home uh, remember uh, in the heart uh, the, the the place and the people and the history that there are behind uh, uh, a restaurant behind a glass of wine i believe yeah, the whole Langa Monterrato Roero experience, I'd say. It's like a package. You can't you can't pinpoint one thing. Yeah. Because it's an algorithm, a crazy algorithm of people, of extraordinary tastes, of uh sunsets like the one we're 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 seeing right here in front of us. Thank you. Um we have another video. Would you mind uh sending the video, the bespoke sure. video? Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. You got it. Want another video? Yeah. Got Just it. a minute. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Welcome. Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about the practical aspects of a bespoke traveler, of a high-end uh, intercontinental traveler coming to this area of the world. And I think that the first thing that would strike you when you visit this area that is that it is naturally bespoke. Um, we have uh, one of the highest concentrations of Michelin stars in Italy. Uh, you'd have a Michelin star per every 20,000 inhabitants, more or less. Uh, so you're, you can compare that to uh, the Amalfi Coast, which I'm sure you all know, and you can compare that as well to the Dolomites. But it's not only the Michelin starred restaurant experience that, um, that would attract our, that, that normally attract our high end intercontinental travelers. Um, it's so interesting how the quality is extremely high across the board. So wherever you're eating, you'll be eating really, really well. Um, be it a gourmet picnic in the vineyards, being at more a more tapas-like tasting, being at a wine tasting in castles and historic homes. There's such a there's really such a wide array of high-end food experiences 
uh, even if you don't want to sit down and have like primo secondo dolce frutta and have like the full on Italian spread uh, with, with, with so many carbohydrates. Another thing that would strike you when visiting the area is that you don't have big hotels. You don't have a lot of like huge hotels uh, which could accommodate big groups. So that is also naturally kind of selecting and, and funneling your, your, your clientele to smaller groups and to a lot of in, more individual groups. A lot of the hotels are boutique style hotels, uh, relay, uh, in historic homes, in castles, in listed buildings. And a lot of them are still run by the Piedmontese families that owned the buildings in the past. And I think this is so important because, again, you have that dialogue with the territory, you have that dialogue with the architecture, and it just it just completes the experience. So um, be it the uh, wine tasting of your Barolo, Barbaresco, Barbera, uh, or the amazing wines that you have, be it the crazy good food, the hospitality experience, it really is bespoke by nature, okay? And then you have like these wow effects. Sometimes you just say like, that's not possible. I mean, this is so crazy beautiful. If you took an American client, or when you do take American clients uh, out into the vineyards, or where is your luogo del cuore? Where is your wow spot? Where it's like just every corner, because uh, here it's, it's like a kaleidoscope where you turn the same four or five stones inside that tube and it keeps changing and it's never the same. You know, in 20 years, I've never seen the same hill twice with the same uh, emotion. It's always changing, just a cloud or a ray of sun and you have a different atmosphere and it's always, it's always, it's a constant wow here. Uh, but uh, where I really see something like tongue in cheek thing or maybe a wow uh, in my guest uh, when, when we visit this territory uh, and when they do these experiences you said really well it's not just eating well here it's having food experiences because, because behind every food there's an interesting story an interesting connection with our tradition uh, with nature with uh, with history uh, so when my guests find uh, that connection they, when they start to see the thread, the invisible thread that is uh, connecting all this aspect, history, nature, uh, history, and everyday stories of people, when they understand, when they start to see that connection, that's their wow, that's what they bring home. Uh, it's when they understand that they're not only seeing beautiful hills and a nice uh, chapel, uh, like many other beautiful, corners we have in Italy or around the world, uh, when they see these connections, there's something that, you know, it's like a click in their mind that never goes back. It, it goes under their skin forever. It's like the H factor, like exactly. the human factor. Exactly. That's the, 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 more than just the human factor is the incredible connection and the, the well-deserved uh, 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 UNESCO recognition goes to that. The intimate connection here between nature and humans and, and history. Here, nature has played a lot, you know, rolling hills, uh, transforming the, this ancient seabed into a beautiful uh, scenery. But uh, man has adapted every single corner of this land to uh, express the, all the potential of this land. It's, not, it's a very soft uh, action, it's, it needs a very intimate knowledge, uh, intimate uh, um, connection with the land. Here, there is a way of saying here, when uh, you buy, uh, and it seldom happens because selling a vineyard here is like selling your grandmother here, you know, it belongs <laughs> to your family for five generations. So when, for some reason it happens, uh, when people buy a vineyard and start to cultivate a vineyard, they normally say, I, I've married that vineyard because it's so like a lifelong connection and sometimes much longer than life. Wow. <laughs> So uh, when, when you start to feel this connection is really, I mean, it's giving goosebumps to me even just thinking about all the different moments when I see people opening up their eyes and understanding how much there is under this beautiful cover of the book. Thank you. Thank you, Sandro. Patrizia, your luogo del cuore, your place of the heart, where are you proud to bring people? 
obviously, <laughs> we have to talk about Troy right uh, now. Right. We have to talk about Guarene. Guarene, my, my nice place. Guarene, it's really nice. Believe me, you can have fantastic five-star hotel. You can have beautiful bed and breakfast, uh, small, uh, like San Michele. You have good restaurants, st two stars, Michelin restaurants, like the Madernassa, very small uh, restauranti. And you have, obviously, art, art, art. We have art. We have the Fondazione Sadretta Rebaudengo with Palazzo Re Rebaudengo. That is a fantastic place to come and to visit us. And uh, we can also talk about my, as they say, my small hill, San Licerio, uh, in which we started to install fantastic installation, giving the opportunity to, to see new work, uh, young artists, and uh, maybe you can come later, not during the day, also during the night, and you can uh, visit uh, San Licerio, in which there is uh, an installation that is quite particular. It's a, it's a satellite dish, and around the satellite dish there is a, a, a red a neon tube that during the night, even from outside, you can uh, you can, with the big distance, you can see this fantastic installation. And uh, so I invite you after the tramonto, after the sunset, <laughs> to come to to Warene and to walk through the hills and see how beautiful is uh, the landscape. And we, during the day, we can also see the Monviso, all the Alps, as you say. Surrounded by. Surrounded by Alps. Yeah, yeah the so, installation is a Paul Kneel installation, if I'm not, not mistaken. It's from Canada. Yeah. He's an artist, a young artist from Canada. The name is Paul Neal, and he did a great job because you, you see from us from very far, you yes. can see the three the three big satellite dishes. And during the night you also can see the light, the red neon tubes that really make a point, give you an idea how can can be great an artist and how can an artist change the landscape, but with a lot of respect for the landscape. As I say, it become a, like a dialogue between art, culture and nature. Yeah, integrating and, and yes. definitely. And now next, in the next month, we have the new installation by another fantastic young artist, Marguerite Humo. And I really hope that you can come and visit us soon and to visit us Palazzo Rebaudengo that we open a new exhibition just in the next month, uh, just in September. So a lot of th new things to come and see in the Roero and in Guarene. Thank, thank you, you. Patricia. And thank you for the extraordinary work you're doing uh, and the, generous, the generosity of the foundation, which is honestly making landmarks, new contemporary landmarks, which are extremely complementary to the uh, secular, to the age-old vineyards. It's so important because contemporary art gives you the possibility to, to work with the artist. And this is something special and yeah. something that we, we really like both. And I really believe that this is the best way uh, to live with the artist, to live in an area so, so great like is the Roero, Lange and Montferrat. <laughs> yeah. Silvano. Yeah. Silvano, your yeah. wow factor. Where do you wow yeah. people? Well, uh, first of all, I share the Patrizia view uh, on the fact that uh, young people, young artists, uh, as it happened with no longer young artists, but very important, uh, during his stay here can really involve the, the population and, and the young uh, generations to, to get closer to art and culture. So this is extremely important. My uh, luogo del cuore, my wow factor is uh, nearby Cozzolo again. There is a slope of a hill facing west yeah. from where you can, where we, we made the open air theater uh, with the steps covered with, with grass. And you, anybody can sit there, watch the, the sun set behind the Bomiso uh, mountains. And uh, all of a sudden you have the music coming out from the vineyards. Oh. And uh, so this is really a goose, goosebumps experience every time. Wow. Trust me. Wow. Yes, so you. we wait to share with you all this experience here in, in Coatzolo. And by the way, from that place, we can, in straight in, in front of us, we have Guarene and then Monviso and then the sun sets. <laughs> so wow. it's really, oh, what, yeah. what a picture. Mauro, I shouldn't even ask you this because I know that everything is beautiful and everything is equally beautiful, but do you have your luogo del cuore? 
a Yermini, il luogo del cuore. Del cuore. Many, many, I have many hearts, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I think that uh, it's very important that many people come here to discover their luogo del cuore. Uh, I think that uh, uh, every time that somebody ca ca come here uh, can understand because there are many luoghi del cuore. Yeah. Because they change every year, because every year uh, our region changes. Because uh, our farmer, our winemaker, our uh, people that uh, works uh, on the hills uh, create every year different hills. Because uh, every wine of every year is always different. Because different is uh, the climate, of course, uh, the rains, uh, the temperatures, but also the style uh, to produce. Uh, it's uh, always every year uh, a creation of different landscape uh, with uh, uh, other colors. Uh, and uh, other sizes of uh, the production of the, uh, of the landscape. Uh, I think that's it's very, very important. Uh, if you come here, you can discover in the, that year uh, your uh, luogo del cuore. We wait uh, for many, many people to discover them. To come and discover their own luogo del cuore. Uh, would there be any questions for, uh, for our guest, Francesco? I will go straight to the questions. Uh, let's see if we have the time. Yeah, let's see quickly and go. I'll arouse them. Let me see. Of course, the, the first one is the easiest one, of course. When is the, you know, uh, people are always wanting to visit these places, not just, you know, the, uh, of course, the beauty, but also for the events, you know, the things that sort of puts it on the map in, in terms of, you know, where should I go? So the question is, when is the best time? Not just, you know, of course, weather wise, but also, in terms of events or things that happen so that people can fully enjoy the place. So what to take it? Some events, Mauro? The most famous event is sure the uh, Truffle Fair, the Alba White Truffle Fair. Uh, for uh, in, in October, in uh, November, uh, nine uh, weekends uh, of Truffle Fairs, but as uh, very, very important, all the events uh, in the autumn. Uh, this autumn we will have also Duyador, that is a very important uh, uh, event about wine uh, in Asti. Uh, but uh, we have many, many uh, little events uh, for all the year. Uh, that is an expression of the tradition uh, of our region. They are very important because uh, they are organized also uh, since 500 years. Uh, uh, and if you come uh, in the, if you go to this event, you can have a real experience of the Italian style of life. Thank you. Uh, there was also mentioned during the presentation in uh, Relais Chateau. So they wanted to have, it, if it's possible, the name again of the Relais Chateau that it was mentioned. Castello di Guarero. Castello di Guarero. Okay. Roero. <laughs> in Roero. Perfect. Yes, it's on the top of, of Guarene, really on the top. It's a nice castello and it's also a very um, hotel and spa. Yeah, I visited, uh, I visited I it. Visited it. Gosh, so now I visit it. So I do, I do, I do know how beautiful it is. So I can testify to that. Also, the rest is amazing. <laughs> Sandra was mentioning earlier that uh, inside the Relais Chateau, it is a chateau, it is the castle itself, and the 15 suites, they have 15 large suites, uh, and they also have a, a museum part of the hotel. Sandra, won't you just... Yeah, look, the castle itself from the, from the 1700s uh, is it's something unique in the world. You are at the same time in a hotel and in a castle as it was when it was used by the, the uh, aristocratic family as their own uh, uh, residence. So uh, uh, it's, it's not a museum in terms of a collection of old uh, or objects in general, uh, but it's like a museum of itself. So it showing the life that went through that castle. So when the, the castle was transforming the hotel, uh, uh, they preserved, completely preserved the uh, original part of the castle. So. Uh, the hotel is basically in the ground, on the ground floor hotel and, and restaurant, and upstairs you are in a castle that is all yours because with 15, uh, 15 rooms you are uh, absolutely part of the, the hotel. Yeah, stunning listed building and the Giardini all'Italiano, the beautiful, exactly. magnificent gardens. The, the, the hotel is present in the first video, Colors of Langeroero. Maybe we can send yeah. the link. 
Um, it's present. There's a beautiful sunrise there, and you see this enormous castle with the sunrise coming over in the Roero area. And if you just walk a little bit, you arrive to Palazzo Rere Baudengo, and you can see contemporary art. So let's take a look at the video. All right. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you very much for uh, for the time, for your hospitality, of course, for uh, this great content. Michaela, Mauro. Let's see if I can remember all that. Let me see. Right. Michaela, Mauro, Sandro, Silvano, Patrizia, and of course Stefano. Thank you very much for your hospitality, for your great contribution, uh, and also to uh, all our guests, of course. Uh, Thanks again for taking your time off and sort of spending time with us to learn more about uh, this beautiful part of Italy. Once again, you will be receiving a, a survey email afterwards so they can give us a sense about today's presentation. If you want to have more information, if you want to learn more about the area. And moreover, of course, I forgot to mention there is a, a app for grab for uh, one lucky uh, attendee. We will be sending out a quick questionnaire after the webinar. The first person to answer correctly will have a chance to have a tasting in the next two years if they stop by in the area on one of the beautiful sort of cantine that they have there and taste the great wine. So once again, I want to thank all of them for the for the for the great contribution. Of course, this is a, a cooperative airport. I want to thank my colleague from uh, Toronto, Sabrina Salvatore, from our Los Angeles office, Fabrizio De Manuel. 
Fabrizio De Manuele from our New York office, Caterina, Cosmo, and Mazza. Thank you very much. See you the next one. Bye. Thank Cheers. You. Bye. Bye.